Welcome back to another episode of Mastering Diagnostics with me, Brandon Steckler, Technical Editor of Motor Rage Magazine. We are on episode number 16, and today I want to talk about the importance of, of pre- and post-testing, and what I'm referring to, uh, referencing a repair. Uh, in other words, I want to view data as a diagnostician because I am a scientist, just like you are, whether you like it or not. And as a scientist, we can't make decisions based upon gut feelings. We have to focus our attention to data that we collect. And when we analyze that data and we understand that data, hopefully it will yield us an accurate diagnostic conclusion. Now, whether that diagnosis is a repair or an adjustment or a component replacement or an update to computer software, calibration of some sort, um, rehoming of some sort, that's yet to be determined. It depends on the vehicle and the problem. Uh, but my point is we want to view data that shows the problem. But here's where many technicians fall short. After they fix the problem, they take the vehicle on a road test. They verify the problem is gone. What I really mean is they verify the symptom is gone. And then they give the keys back to the service advisor. Now, in many situations, we can get away with that. In other words, the car runs bad. We fix the problem and the car runs good. It's pretty much an instant reflection that we made a change. However, if we take the opportunity, and I'm asking you to do this, please take the opportunity to grab information. The same information that showed the fault, I want you to take the time to grab that information again that shows that the car is fixed. And here's why. Not only will the car be running better, hopefully, when you've made the right decision, in other words, the symptom's gone, but the data is also going to show that the problem is fixed. And that, my friends, is going to give you confidence, and that is also going to allow you to see what known good data for that vehicle looks like. So regarding confidence, you'll know the car is fixed because the symptom's gone and also the data is going to change. Now, I want to bring about a point. The vehicle we're going to be referencing today is a 2009 Acura RDX with a 2.3 liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine. And we're going to introduce a fault and that fault is going to be reflected in the engine data. But there's two things I want you to pay attention to. A, the data itself, but B, how the data changes under different operating conditions because of the type of fault we have. We're going to be introducing a vacuum leak, and I'm going to show you on a diagram here what that vacuum leak truly means and how the data is going to show almost exactly where the problem is. What I'm displaying here is a picture uh, not necessarily of the vehicle we're going to be referencing, but a similar layout. Of course, this one has twin banks, but the point I'm trying to make is going to be reflected exactly the same. So what I'd like to show you here is a mass airflow meter. And this mass airflow meter is going to meter the incoming air to the engine. Now, we are going to be introducing a vacuum leak, and the vacuum leak I'm going to introduce is going to be right behind the throttle plate on the intake manifold side of the throttle plate, not the intercooler side of the throttle plate. What's the significance, you may ask? What's the difference between creating a leak here and creating a leak here? Well, first I'll say both faults, whether the leak is here where the star is currently, or somewhere up here in front of the throttle plate, both leaks would be considered an unmetered air leak. And as a result of an unmetered air leak, what that means is the engine is breathing air, but the mass airflow sensor is not reading the air that the engine's breathing, or it's not reading it accurately. Said another way, if this vehicle was ingesting three grams of air per second, and I created an unmetered air leak, let's say in this area here, the unmetered air leak would still allow the engine to breathe the same three grams of air per second, but the mass airflow sensor will not be reading that same amount of air. Now, why is this a problem? This is a problem because the PCM delivers fuel based upon airflow. It's programmed to respond to the mass airflow sensor input, meaning the computer is not at all smart. If it reads two grams of air per second, 
the PCM is going to deliver fuel to match the air at two grams of air per second. As a result, the cylinder is going to be underfueled and we will have a lean condition which would cause elevated fuel trim. Now if I open up the throttle, the same fault is going to occur and it's going to cause the same symptom. Unmetered air is going to enter the engine and we are going to have a fuel trim corrective factor. Now pretend for a moment my leak isn't somewhere up here but instead behind the throttle plate just as this drawing indicates. Again, at idle, we have unmetered air going into the engine, and that intake manifold is under a strong negative pressure or vacuum. But what happens to that manifold vacuum when we open up the throttle? The vacuum disappears. What am I trying to tell you? As a result, the effects of a vacuum leak disappear. So in this scenario, we will have elevated fuel trims at idle, but under open throttle, those elevated fuel trims will tend to vanish. That's what happens on a naturally aspirated vehicle. But in this scenario, under turbocharged, under pressurized induction, that vacuum leak will disappear. But then again, the turbocharger will pressurize the intake manifold. And if there's a leak there, of course, the mass airflow sensor is measuring the incoming air. But because of the leak, that air isn't making it to the cylinders. Said another way, the PCM will fuel for the incoming air. But since the air never got there, now all six cylinders in this case are overly rich. And as a result, we'll have negative fuel trim under elevated RPMs and load, under high airflow rates, under turbocharge output. I'm under the hood now. And what I'm going to do is remove a vacuum hose. This vacuum hose is going to allow unmetered air into the engine on the engine side of the throttle blade. All right, so we're in the vehicle. Um, on a safe road, buckled up nice and tight. We're gonna perform a full throttle acceleration. What I want you to notice, we'll view the data when we get back, back to the office is my conditions are going to change. I'm going here from an idle condition and then eventually wide open throttle. And what I'm getting at is at idle, we've got strong manifold vacuum. At wide open throttle, not only do we lose the vacuum and the effect of the vacuum leak, but now we are under boost pressure. So we're going to see the exact opposite effect. So here's the data. Again, we're using the Bosch ADS 625X. And I'm going to place this here on my passenger seat and go for a ride. Viewing the data from the scan tool, when I started the vehicle, our 2.3 liter engine is breathing less air. At idle, I anticipated nearly three grams of air per second or more for this displacement engine. And I'm not seeing that. And neither is the PCM. The PCM is fueling for this incoming air here. But it's clear to me that more air is entering the engine because our fuel trim is significantly elevated. So let's watch what happens when we open up the throttle and take it under heavy acceleration. As we begin to accelerate the vehicle, watch what happens to fuel trims here. As RPM increases, the fuel trim starts to come down. And as a result of the engine increasing in speed and airflow, the fact that the fuel trim is coming down tells me that more air is being measured by the air mass meter than is actually entering the engine. Considering this vehicle's configuration as a turbocharged or pressurized induction system vehicle, this is the classic case of a vacuum leak, otherwise stated a leak behind the throttle plate on the intake manifold side 
of the throttle plate. So this data yielded us a hypothesis. We are going to investigate under the hood and we would find our vacuum leak. So next comes the repair. So with the repair of the vacuum leak, we can see that we are now reflecting over three grams of air per second, which I would anticipate for this 2.3 liter turbocharged engine at idle. Um, I am not considerably happy with these fuel trims, but they're certainly not plus 25%. So according to this data, we've made a significant change in the data and the vehicle idles better. Now taking this vehicle under high RPM, we could see that our fuel trim, right before we go into open loop, is not terribly high. Further indicating that the vehicle is fixed. So as you can see, viewing pre and post repair data can give you some insight as to whether or not you actually fix the problem before you even get on the road. However, after you get on the road and you recapture that same data, this not only gives us confidence because it proves the vehicle's fixed before we give it back to the customer, but it also improves our fix right the first time score and potentially our profits. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of Mastering Diagnostics. I'm Brandon Steckler, Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine, and I hope you join me next time. Have a great day.